Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. Dear friends, good evening. Amen. We gather here to celebrate the Mass of our Lord's Supper. We gather together as brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess. Oh my God, thank you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned. In my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most serious fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Christ eleison, Christ eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie.
who have called us to participate in this most sacred supper in which your only begotten Son went about to hand himself over to death, entrusted to the church a sacrifice new for all eternity, the banquet of his love. Grant, we pray, that we may draw from so great a mystery the fullness of charity and of life through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall stand at the head of your calendar. You shall reckon it the first month of the year. Tell the whole community of Israel, On the tenth of this month, every one of your families must procure for itself a lamb, one apiece for each household. If a family is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join the nearest household in procuring one, and shall share the lamb, in proportion to the number of persons who partake of it. The lamb must be a year old male, without blemish. You may take it from either the sheep or the goats. You shall keep it until the fourteenth day of this month, and then but the whole assembly of Israel present, it shall be slaughtered during the evening twilight. They shall take some of its blood and apply it to the two doorposts and the lintel of every house in which they partake of the lamb. That same night, they shall eat its roasted flesh with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. This is how you are to eat it. With your loins gird, sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, you shall eat like the one who are in flight. It is the Passover of the Lord. For on this night I shall go through Egypt, striking down every first lord of the land, both man and beast, and executing judgment on all the gods of Egypt, I the Lord. But the blood shall mark the houses where you are, seeing the blood I will pass over you. Thus, when I strike the land of Egypt, no destructive blow shall come upon you. This day shall be a memorial feast for you, which all your generation shall celebrate, for pilgrimages to the Lord as a perpetual institution. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
sacrifice of thanksgiving, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. My vows to the Lord I will pay in the presence of all his people. first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and after having given thanks, broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. The word of the Lord. According to John. Glory to you, o Lord. Before the feast of Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to pass from this world to the Father. He loved his own in the world, and he loved them to the end. The devil had already induced Judas, son of Simon the Iscariot, to hand him over. So, during supper, fully aware that the Father had put everything into his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God, he rose from supper and took off his outer garments. He took a towel and tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with the towel around his waist. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Master, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, What I am doing you do not understand now, but you will understand later. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, Unless I wash you, you will have no inheritance with me. 
Simon Peter said to him, Master, then not only my feet, but my hands and head as well. Jesus said to him, Whoever has bathed has no need except to have his feet washed, for he is clean all over. So you are clean, but not all, for he knew who would betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Praise be Jesus Christ. Amen. Yes, dear friends, it's good to be with you here today at the Mass of the Lord's Supper. Today was not a good day to go bike riding. <laughs> we all with the snow flying in. However, I gave myself a little R and R this afternoon. I call it attitude readjustment, doing something other than office work. And I did my semi-annual tune-up of my bike. And it's not a motorcycle, although there are bishops out there, a couple of my friends that do have motorcycles, Harleys, but that's off the point of the homily. And it's a, but, but it's a, uh, a hybrid bike that I have, like a Trek. And what I did is basically take apart the gears, uh, degrease everything in there, uh, take a look at the brakes, uh, see if they're still functioning. I've learned in my neck of the woods, the brakes are more important than the gears. <laughs> but now it's done. And I learned that from a friend. I, I took notes on my smartphone of what he had done, but I, I still had that image of how he took his bike apart, what he did. And so I modeled myself today after what he did, and I'll continue to do that. And it's a benefit, because I know if anything goes wrong with the bike, I can fix it myself. I don't have to take it in. In a more profound way, no look at hands here, but how many of us sometimes, as we're growing up, as when we're adults, we're saying, you know, dad just talked through me, <laughs> or I think I just talked like my mom. We, we learn growing up. We model ourselves after our parents. That's the domestic church. It's the first place we learn our faith. We model ourselves as Christians, imitating our parents and siblings. This is a day to model ourselves. I have given you a model to follow. Those are Jesus' exact words. He didn't say take it or leave it. A model for you to follow. Today we hear the truth behind the institution of the Eucharist from St. Paul and how it plays out in actions, human actions, in Jesus himself as he demonstrates the washing of the feet what real Christian service is. For it is replete with humility and docility. Today's celebration, as well as last Sunday, Passion Sunday, Palm Sunday, illustrates the humility Jesus perfectly embodies. To come to us not as a distant king. No. Instead, as a humble, obedient servant. The washing of the apostles' feet, in fact, provides us with more baptismal imagery. Are we not quickening our pace for those baptisms that will occur that Easter vigil? To wash, to be made clean. And Jesus is the source. Jesus utilized that Passover meal, which we heard of its institution in our first reading today, to institute the Eucharist, the very center of 
the church, the body, and the blood of Christ. But this Eucharist comes with responsibility for us disciples. St. Paul reprimands the Corinth community concerning their selfishness and potential ignorance. A lesson to our community 20 centuries later. You see, our baptism cannot be reduced to a get out of hell free card. No. It comes with responsibility to live it. As members of the body of Christ, we have the responsibility to be credible disciples of Christ, to live our baptismal vocation for all to see. Our faith, yes, it is personal, but it is never private. During this sacred triduum, we can deepen our resolve to embrace in body, mind, and spirit the humility and docility of Christ. This time, this triduum, we should intensify our spiritual lives, keeping our God eyes gazed on the holy face of Jesus. Well, it begins by listening to him. Listening to those very words of Jesus that we heard in the gospel today. I have given you a model to follow. Dear friends, what is our answer? Amen. Amen. Last Supper, Christ promised that whatever we ask in his name will be granted. Let us then boldly pray to our Father in heaven. For the bishops and priests of the church, that they may celebrate worthily the sacraments entrusted to them. Let us pray to the Lord. <laughs> the Lord hear our prayer. For government leaders, that they may diligently serve the people under their care. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those suffering from the pandemic, that they may receive comfort and strength from Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all of us gathered here, that we may grow in love and devotion to the most holy Eucharist. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the souls in purgatory, that the merits of Christ's passion may bring them to the glory of heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our prayer. Almighty Father, in your unspeakable goodness, graciously bless us and answer these prayers. Your most beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Oh. Mm -hmm. 
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, for the grace and glory of his name, for our good and for all of his holy church. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, who through Christ our Lord, for he is the true and eternal priest, who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim, commanding us to make off this offering as his memorial. As we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. And as we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls 
and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day on which our Lord Jesus Christ was handed over for our sake, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and Blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jew, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service that of your whole family, which we make to you as we observe the day on which our Lord Jesus Christ handed on the mysteries of his body and blood for his disciples to celebrate. Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and count among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer for our salvation and the salvation of all, that is today, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, Command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, 
in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, who through this participation at the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants, who have gone before us with the sign of faith, and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints, admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, to sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And give us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The Lord, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Supper of your Son in this present age, so we may enjoy his banquet for all eternity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen.